to introduce you to how to actually use the watercolour, I've put a pea-sized amount of Prussian blue and cadmium yellow in opposite corners of the palette, a flat area of the palette or a plate, whatever you're using, but keep them separate. So I've got plenty of room in the middle to blend and um, alter the colours, which you'll see in a minute. So taking my brush, I'm going to wet it. When you wet it, knock it right on the bottom of your pot. Equally, when you're washing your brush, knock it on the pot, bottom of the pot, because then it really gets the water right inside all the bristles. Then when you lift your brush out, scrape it to remove excess water. So spray, scrape it two or three times. Then take a little bit of paint from the edge of the paint, a little bit of colour from the edge of the paint. Then apply that to your paper. And there I've got the perfect amount of water in relation to, in ratio to paint. So you can see, if you can try and remember that kind of consistency and feel of the brush. Now, if I add more water, it will make the colour paler. So paler colours are created by adding more water and you use the white of the paper showing through to give a paler shade. So I've mixed it well, scrape your brush on the edge of the palette and then there's my colour. Now you can do that again and again, keep adding water and try testing it out so you can see how pale you can get. Prussian blue is a very strong colour so you'll find that you can get um, from very intense to very pale. The other thing I can show you while I'm doing this is I, I put that colour down. If I then go, keep going without going back to the paint or to the water, can you see how the brush is running out of colour? You've already practiced one of the techniques in doing that and that's called dry brush. So it's skimming the surface. This is where our knot paper is really coming into effect. It's skimming the surface of the paper and leaving all these little flecks, which is great. I mean, you can probably tell already that could be sparkling seawater. Now I'm going to take the yellow. Yellow is one of those colours which discolours very, very easily. So when you're using yellow, make sure your brush is really clean and your palette is really clean. So I've got some yellow and can you see how easily, I've got the minutest amount of blue there and it's already discoloured. Never mind, we'll carry on. So taking a tiny bit of blue and mixing that in with the yellow, I've got a lovely, lovely green. I could, I could have, have had it actually paler than that. You see, I've made it a little bit creamier. There we go. And you can keep adding the blue till it gets darker and darker green. So can you see how just changing that ratio of blue to green and you're going to get some fantastic colour variations. This is a really good exercise to go from one pure colour and take that all the way through to another pure colour so that you really understand the proportions and how much you need and what that cap those two colours are capable of. Play around with all the tubes you have. If you only buy three colours, get a Prussian blue, a cadmium yellow and a cadmium red and test them like this. Try two colours at a time, changing which two you choose and then play with three and see how many colours you can get. Then 
clean my brush again. Now what I was doing here to get these different shades of green was I was mixing colour on the plat palette. You can mix the colour on the palette or you can mix the colour on the paper and it's slightly different. So if I, if I put some pure yellow paint down there and I want to make a green area within it, I'm going to pick some up of this greeny blue and add that. So you can see how that would work. I could equally go even darker. One of the tricks for doing this is to not have my brush too wet. It's quite, um, let's say it's dry, it's not dry, it's just not got, not got excess water and you can ensure that happens by making sure you scrape your brush. So if I scrape my brush so I've got just enough water there to do what I want it to do and then I can add another colour in it and it's not going to run excessively. It just sits nicely in the paint. I'll do a little test to show you what happens if I have it very wet. So here I've got a very wet circle of colour. I'm going to take some blue and I'm going to add my blue and that will start to run away and um, move and create what we call blooms or cauliflowers. So the way to avoid that is to scrape your brush so you haven't got excess and then you'll be able to apply the colour without too much of this happening. You'll be in control, that's what we want. We want to be in control of the watercolour. So we've tried wet on dry to get the dry brush effect. And this is called wet in wet, where you're using wet paint on top of wet paint. So that's another key technique for watercolour. So practice that, practice playing around with mixing your colours using wet on dry and wet in wet. So you get, really get used to how much water to use. If you've got too much water, scrape, scrape your brush. If a messy effect is happening, then remember to scrape your brush and then you'll be back in charge. All right? So let me move on and I'll show you what lovely techniques you can create with wet paper. Put that to one side. I'll just get a few of the bits and pieces that I'm going to need while I do this. I've got some kitchen towel, some salt, my card and my matchstick. Um, I'm going to use a bit of bubble wrap and let's see, a bit of oil pastel. Okay, so first of all, you've just painted, imagine, you've just painted a nice wet area. Now, from that, you can scratch. So you can scratch it out so you start to get grasses or hairs, whatever you want it to be. The wetter it is, this is where we're deliberately applying puddles of colour. The wetter it is, the further it will travel. You can equally scratch to make marks within a shape. So if I paint myself a leaf, I can then scratch veins within it. Now, initially, I'm damaging the surface of the paper, so the paint then 
seeps into that area and it's causing these darker lines. As the paint starts to dry, you will get lighter lines. So I'm just going to wait a minute and see if I can show you because then what's happening is you're scratching and revealing the paper surface um, but it's, the paint's not too wet, too wet to move into it. I'll just give it a second or two. So you've done your scratching and flicking out and you'll have done scratching in this way. Let me see, yeah, perfect. I didn't, wasn't sure it was going to work. But if you leave it so it's half dry and then you scratch, you push the paint away and you get some lovely white marks. Another thing with your matchstick is you can draw with it, but I just twist it just while I've got my matchstick in my hand. One of my favourite, favourite tools is playing with and painting with a matchstick. Moving on, talking about while you've got wet paint, what you can do. If I paint another area, At this time, I'm going to sprinkle some salt. And I don't know if you can see immediately, you can see a reaction with the paint and it's soaking that color up. Leave it to dry, leave it until it's completely dry and you'll get little starburst effects coming through. You can play with this too. You can decide, try different amounts of salt, less or more whether your paint is very, very wet, very thick, and so on, to see what else you can achieve. Right, another area of colour. This time I'm going to get some kitchen towel. Now, kitchen towel is good at just blotting. If it's got pattern, it might leave the pattern, this one hasn't. But you can also use it to blot clouds in skies. I'll give you, a, I'll do a little bit more so you can see what I mean. But I could, you can see that might be a cloud. And as soon as you've stopped blotting, what tends to happen is the paint then comes up to the dry edge so you start to get some harder lines. You can add more. Okay, so that's blotting. You can Use bubble wrap now. If I get my bubble wrap and I'm going to find, I want the, the bubble side going down and I place it straight onto wet paint. Give it a little push. You'll see little circles forming underneath. And then leave it and those little circles will stay. When it's dry, they will stay there. So there's a few things you can do while your paint is wet. Um, there are more, there are more. I just thought of one which is really quite nice, so I'll just do that. Um, while your paint's wet, if you get your oil pastel and draw into it, you see that again. The paint's running away from it, but it's, it gives a lovely rich colour. So that's looking at what to do when your paint is wet. Now when your paint is dry, I get, I'll go back to the first sheet we were looking at because this paint is now dry. You can, when it's completely dry, you can create a glaze. A glaze is a really thin layer of paint. So I've got very water, watery. When I mean say thin, I mean thin in terms of colour 
not a very strong colour. So I've got my pale blue and I'm going to run that over that. And can you see it's a glaze, it's allowing the colour from the um, image underneath to show through. And it's really, it's a really effective technique. It works beautifully when you're trying to pull a whole area together, you can put a glaze on it. The only thing I'd say is when you do that, you need to do a confident mark. If you, you and go over it just the once, if you go over, and I'll show you here, if I go over and I run my brush a few times, can you see how that's lifting the paint and you're starting to see the white of the paper on underneath? So be aware that that happens. If you don't want that, don't keep going backwards and forwards with your brush. You've just got to think carefully beforehand. I want my glaze there. Do it. Stop. The other thing I mentioned was removing colour. Now, I have these lovely brushes from Rosemary Brushes. Um, I'll show you how they work. Wet it. I'm going to use my fingers to take excess water off so it's not as strong as using a tissue. So my brush is still damp. And then if I run that through the colour, I get left with a light, much lighter area. It doesn't always take it off completely, but we can try, let's see. Some colours stain the paper more than others. So yeah, that's not bad. So you can see that would, I would be able to make a correction there if, I, if it was the wrong shape. You can always use it like I did earlier. You can create lines within and they come in um, small, medium and large. That's the medium and the small, you can see by comparison, is very tiny. But that was good. I used that for... Um, the light in between some planks of wood and that was very effective. So that's the eradicator. So when it's dry you can you can um, create glazes or you can you can lift. You can also then start to flick on top of. So do if you're doing anything on top that's adding more paint you must make sure your base layer is completely dry. Some other things you can do are flicking. So what you do there is you get lots of paint, watery paint, scoop it up with your brush. So it's as well loaded as it possibly can be. It just can't help but drip. Then hold your brush over the paper and tap it. And If that doesn't happen, if you tap it and nothing happens, it means that you haven't got enough paint. Your paint perhaps isn't watery enough or it's, it's too thick. Um, you haven't scooped up enough. So you need to be quite generous. So have a go. Or maybe you're holding your brush too tight. If you hold it really tight, it doesn't, well, it's still, still working, but not quite so well. I tap the brush from the top when I'm doing it. Now, another fun thing to do is to draw, you could do this with a brush, I'm doing it with a matchstick, but if you draw, so I've got some twigs going here, then use a water spray and if I spray, can you see how the, the paint is running away from those little branches? So if you're doing trees with lots and lots of little twigs and things, this can look like little bits of leaf and so on, especially when it's a particularly, it's in the distance and you don't want to paint lots of detail. That's a really effective way of using the water spray. Now, one popular technique, which is a lovely way to get started with watercolour, is um, something called line and wash. 
And what you can do here is if you, um, if you're not confident in, in your drawing, then draw first. So I'm going to just do a very simple flower. Okay. Then using, I'm going to grab a pink or something else, I think. So once you've got your colour, grab your waterproof pen. Let's say it doesn't matter, it's a fine liner, it will say waterproof on the side somewhere if it is waterproof, or test it. And then I'm going to go round my picture. I'm not, not following it exactly because it doesn't matter. And Make sure your line work is dry. These pens do take a, a minute or two sometimes to dry. So to check it, I'm going to blot it. So I don't want that running into my paintwork. Now rub it out. So rub out the pencil. And I'm going to use a firm rubber for this. So I want all that pencil gone. So I could have pet drawn a house or a cat, absolutely anything. And the nice thing about it is you draw your pencil and then you've got an opportunity with your pen to change it or add more detail. Then I then go in. I quite like it when the colour doesn't completely follow the exact lines. And I'm going to put a bit of blue in that. I'll vary it a little bit so some of it can some bleed, dab some more colour in. And because I can never help it, we'll just do a little bit of flicking. So a simple little picture or painting using line and wash waterproof pen and watercolours. Now, another thing you can use is a bit of plastic card. If you dip your card in the paint, take the excess off by scraping it on the side and then you'll be able to print lines that's quite nice in lots of pictures to have printed lines rather than with a fine brush which can be wobbly. You can also use the edge of your paper, you know the watercolour paper is thick enough to achieve that effect but that's, that's a nice thing. The other thing I do is to scrape it, so pressing it down so my card bends and then scrape it and you can see how it skims the surface of the, of the knot paper and enables me to get that texture. And that's, that is, you'll be, once you get going, you'll realise that it's so versatile and so useful. An old ruse and paths and all sorts. So, scraping. What else can I show you? Um, Ink and a stick we've talked about where I use the matchstick to draw with. You can use, when you do line and wash, you can use Indian ink instead of the um, pen. And if you use Indian ink with a matchstick, dry it and then put the wash on top. That looks, I think, a little bit more interesting than just using the, um, the pen. So I could have done my flower in my matchstick. And then when that's dry, added my wash on top. So that's my matchstick. If you have wet paint. Another option 
open to you is to use a watercolour pencil and I'm going to grab a black one with a piece of with a piece of sandpaper if you rub the sand rub the pencil against the sandpaper I don't know if you can see that so that the dust falls on the paper that works beautifully if I'd have used red and that was the middle of a poppy that would have been really that would have that's particularly effective but if you you can keep going if you um, if you do that you'll see that it only sticks where it's wet so I could have used clear water I don't think this water is going to look clear at the moment but I could have just used clear water and then let's go around here blow it off and it will only stick where it's wet so you can add it anywhere once you've finished your painting you could still start to add texture in this technique just by dotting the water where you want the the um the sandpaper dust to go. There are other products you can use. Um, in terms of actual mediums, you've got watercolour pencils, uh, water-soluble crayons, ink tents, pencils and blocks, watercolour blocks, all sorts of things that when you add water to them, they dissolve and spread the colour. I thought I'd show you particularly watercolour pencils. If you have the pencil dry, you get that kind of mark. If you dip it in your water and use it wet, can you see how much stronger that is? So you can use it wet or you can use it dry. Equally, if you've got an area that you've coloured with a wet brush, if you go over it, you activate the colour and blend it together. And equally with this, I could spread it out. So they, they are lovely. And um, watercolour pencils. There's also a brand called Ink Tents, which are actually made of ink, but they have really strong, rich colour. Um, so I particularly enjoy those. Now, oh, and there's wax crayons as well. Wax crayons that strangely enough do dissolve in there are some that dissolve in water and give you a waxy crayon type effect next thing i'd like to look at is using items to print now i'll move on to another piece of paper for this i have just grabbed a few bits and pieces but you can use anything i mean i've got a bit of corrugated card bubble wrap again a bit of toweling, a leaf, and I'm going to paint quite creamy paint. Let me get a little bit more colour so I've got enough. Play around with how wet it is and how dry it is because that will give you different effects. If I apply the paint to that turn it over, press it down firmly and I will get left with some lines. I love it anything that enables me to apply paint without actually using the brush. So this time with the bubble wrap I'm putting the paint on the bubble wrap. So quite creamy paint so it doesn't move about too much. Move my leaf and then put it down and like before, just press it. And I'll leave that for a minute. With the leaf, you want to choose a leaf that's got quite pronounced veins. And I'm gonna paint the back of the leaf. should have done this on a bit of tissue separately but I didn't and then turn it over 
it sometimes helps to get a piece of paper to help you press it down. You're less likely to move it in the process. So press that down. This is a lovely exercise to do in the autumn. So there we are, we've got a leaf imprint. Um, this might be all right. Yeah, so if I remove it carefully. And this is a little bit of a test, but I'm just going to try applying the paint to toweling. I'm thinking I'm going to get some little dots, some little marks, press that down. It's a nice pale because it's absorbed the paint, but it does give the effect. It is You, you can see the fact that that was used with um, toweling. Now, other things, sponge, I'm going to wet my sponge. I've got natural sponge here. Squeeze out as much water as I can. Pick up some colour and then print with that. So wet or dry, the wetter the dry, oh, wetter or drier. So I've got a blob of paint, but I don't mind that. You can use the, the sponge, as I mentioned earlier, also to lift colour up off a wet area of paint. So there's, you get the idea there that you can print with anything, anything that you can find, anything that crosses your, pardon me, crosses your mind, you can print with. You can apply paint, you can use um, rubber stamps and things like that. They can be used with watercolour, it just depends on how much you've got. Um, even, let me just try this tish, bit of tissue, I mean it's, it's all about playing around, see what you've got, whoops, see what you've got and test it, make notes of what you've used and then you can call upon it again. Quite often when I'm doing a painting I will decide, look at it and think well okay maybe I could use bubble wrap there, maybe I could use a scraped or corrugated card, you know you never you can just keep your options open and see what you can do. And what you actually apply the paint with also makes a difference. Like, as I say, I try and avoid always using a brush, but you can use a piece of sponge or you could use, say I've used a matchstick, you could use a feather. You know, don't be restricted. The paint can be applied or removed however you want it to be. So you can really, really... Um, play around and in, enjoy it and create, create some interesting textures that people sort of, you know, people will look at your pictures and think, oh, I wonder what, how did she manage that? That's clever. The other thing is, with all of these, I've done these um, in paint on a white piece of paper, but I could have done them on a piece of paper that was already painted, or I could leave them to dry and then when they're really dry, put a little bit of a glaze over the top. So I'm not, I'm not restricted at what point in a painting I use these. So that's printing. Now, the last thing I'd like to show you is how to preserve the white. Now, when you have, when you're looking at painting in watercolor, one of the most important things is how you're going to create highlights. And we can do several things. We can use, we can leave the paper white, that's an obvious choice. So if I, if I draw some sort of cherries here, Okay, some quick cherries. Now, I can use wax. So just pressing wax for a highlight. I can use drawing gum or masking fluid applied with my colour shaper. I can lift with a tissue once it's painted. 
I could add gouache at the end. So we'll do, we'll do a few, we'll do a few different options that I can show you. Um, with this one, I used wax. I could have used, instead of wax, I'm just gonna grab some red paint. Instead of wax, I could have used oil pastel. A white oil pastel would have behaves in exactly the same way as wax. Then I've got a deep red here. It's a alizarin crimson. And you'll see when I go over the wax, it leaves white. So So I've got colour, it's my brush is scraped, I haven't got too much paint there. If you're painting, by the way, if you're painting and you have got too much paint, say, let me do it, let, say it's really, really watery and you're thinking, oh, well, that's a bit puddly. Can you see how puddly that is? If you get your brush, wash it, dab off the ex excess water, and then you can use your brush as a sponge. Can you see how that's lifted? Now it's lifted that colour. I'm going to go back over it because I want it all to be even, but it's lifted that puddle off. To add strength to that, if I go in with neat paint, scrape my brush just to double check I'm not adding enough too much water, and then I can paint in some stronger colour, or I could have mixed a darker shade in, say a tiny bit of blue into my red and mixed a darker shade. So that's just a little by the way, how you can add a little bit more, I'll just blend it a little bit, maybe in there. Now this second one I used masking fluid. Now the masking fluid to me looks like it's dried. Yes, it has. So if you, you can touch the masking fluid or you can blot the masking fluid, just make sure it's totally dry before you do anything because then it's um, not going to damage your brush. Then paint over it. So I'm gonna pick up the paint, scrape my brush, apply the paint and it's gone right over that masking fluid. And what I'll be able to do is come back to that. When, when this layer of paint is dry, I'll be able to come back to that and um, paint it. Not paint it, rub it off and it'll be white. Now in this last one, I'll leave that a minute and I'll come back to that. With this last one, I'm going to show you how blotting works. So I've got my, my wet cherry. And I'm going to create, use a little bit of my paper, screw it up so it's manageable. I'm going to make it into a approximately roundish shape and just blot on there. So now you can see that's, that's not as bright white as these others. It's, it's much more muted. So a nice thing to do is to combine to you know, just have a little bit more shading by adding, using the blotting technique as well as masking maybe. I'll dry that with a hairdryer just briefly so I can show you how that lifts. So this, you can rub with your finger, rub quite firmly, or get one of these soft rubbers and just lift it off. So you can see it's completely protected the paper and there's absolutely no hint of the color within that area. If you get, then get a fine brush, if it's like this edge is very harsh, so you can then get a fine brush or a small brush, make sure it's not too wet, and then just gently soften the edge of that. 
And what it will be that's doing is just picking up some of the colour from the edge of that area and softening it, smudging it a bit. And I'm going to get some more water just to pull that in. So I can so you can soften the shapes that you make. Equally, if you look and you think, oh, I wish I'd put a highlight round here or I didn't, I didn't put enough on, that's where your gouache comes in. So your white gouache, and you can use it neat out of the tube. And I'm going to just add another little highlight there. Maybe put a little bit more in there. Okay, so I could do that to any of them. I can go back on top. Put a highlight in this one. So you can use one or several of these techniques to get the white um, back into your picture. But it is a really good idea to plan how you're going to treat your whites right at the very beginning. So we've covered quite a few techniques. I've got all my different sheets here of all the different things that we've done. Um, and I think the next thing I'd like you to do once you've experimented and tried creating those techniques is to play.